Welcome to Channel AMAC, your insight to the Australian visa system. Good day everyone, my name is Kyle Young, your online YouTube visa consultant. Are you interested about my great to Australia? Why don't you consider to subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell on the side so once we have all the updates and news, you'll be the first one of getting all the insight. Now today's video, I'm going to talk about bridging visa. Now it's a it's a very rare topic, uh, but why am I talking about it? Because over the past two years, there has been a lot of delays, backlog, and people lodging visa hasn't really gone granted, taking long time, correct? And while you're waiting for it, what visa do you hold? Bridging visa. Now. It's not a you know magical visa, but I think that over the past few weeks, because of the um, the the job and skill summits, a lot of people has been uh, receiving invitation from immigration, whereby uh, they are allowed to lodge a further visa applications, right? But what happened if you're holding a bridging visa and you got invited? Can you still lodge it? Uh, that is the the key question that I want to answer today. Now, obviously, a uh, bridging visa is a visa uh, that, well, basically, it's a bridging. Uh, it, it gives the visa applicant while they're waiting for their next visa, and while the delay or the processing is taking place, the visa applicant is holding a lawful status in Australia rather than without the visa become unlawful which is going to be a lot of trouble so bridge visa does bring you a lot of condition and rights as well for example there's also a work permit that you can apply for uh, studying so all sorts of right is connected to bridging visa as well now the key question is here what happened if you have holding a bridging visa and whilst you're holding it you get invitation and you're ready to apply for the next visa so the traditional bridging visa the very commonly known bridging visa is bridging visa a uh, which is not a you know big magic and things like that. but you see that little um, thing here says from 1st october the option to apply bridging visa a b c uh in person or visa paperwork will no longer be available so everything is going online form which very which is very convenient but as you can see there are different type of bridging visa now the the commonly known is bridging visa a but there's also b and c so let me explain a little bit more now bridging visa b is where you're holding a bridging visa a uh, that does not allow you to travel offshore. Now I, I don't I don't know why they design such kind of visa and they need people to pay around 169 or 170 bucks uh, to transfer into bridging visa B. And then bridging visa B's condition is exactly the same as bridging visa A, but allow you to travel. Uh, but look, don't know why they have such restriction. I thought. They should just change it, giving Bridging Visa A the right to travel as well, right? Anyway, now, while you're holding a Bridging Visa, and then you uh, further lodge for a uh, whatever the invitation you get invited by 189 or 190 or 491, whichever it is, uh, you're still allowed to lodge it. So once you lodge it, you'll be holding two Bridging Visas coincidentally very funny right so you're holding a bridging visa a because the new 189 visa has been lodged and it's not finalized yet it will provide you another bridging visa now that bridging visa will then be a bridging visa c now bridging visa c uh generally doesn't give you any right to actually transfer into bridging visa b by means uh, you cannot get out of australia if you get out it's all gone so um Technically, how you can manage it. I mean, it's 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 funny how they actually design um, the bridging visa system. Make it so complicated, isn't it? Uh, I got invited, and why am I not getting all the rights that I should have in Australia? Don't know. I think that's for the government to answer. So, I think it will be easier just to merge A, B, C together uh, in ways. But I think they 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 design it for a reason. But 
anyway, I, I don't see any point on having a separation of A and B can travel and C basically cannot do anything. Then why did you create bridging visa C? Okay, now I, I think it's just to prevent people abusing bridging visa system. So anyway, in our cases, um, for example, let's go back to the scenario. You're holding a bridging visa. You get invited for 189 visa. Then you lodge a 189 visa. You get bridging v original bridging visa A, and you get bridging visa C. So if you do want to travel, then you use your original bridging visa A to apply for bridging visa B, so you can travel. And at this point of time, you are holding bridging visa B together with a bridging visa C. So why am I talking about this? Because a lot of people got invited, they get excited. They, they just lodge it and get bridging visa C and they say, ah, oh, okay, the original original visa application with the bridging visa A is obsolete. Let's just withdraw it, take it away. Well, yeah, that's the right way to do. But if you take it away, right? And currently, 189 visa is gonna take, I don't know, three, six, nine, 12 months. And if during that time, you're required to travel, with a bridging visa C, which is not allow you to travel, then you're doomed. Then you're doomed. So my suggestion at best practices is keep the two bridging visas and wait for each, either one of the visa to be finalized first. So for example, if the original visa, for example, it's gonna be for a five visa, wait for it to be granted, that's fine. That's even better. So you then you hold a, a, a four A five visa plus a bridging visa C whilst waiting for the, the next 189 to be granted. And in another scenario, if 189 to be granted before the previous visa, then, it's even, then that will be the time that you should choose to withdraw that original visa that you actually hold. Complicated, isn't it? It's, you really need to go through a chronological order, knowing which visa you have actually lodged or not and what uh, bridging visa is connected to whichever visa application to work or this out. Now, obviously, we have been dealing with this kind of situation for the past almost 20 years. That's why we can we know inside out. But if you're not familiar with it, a lot of people struggle during these two years because of the delay, backlog, bridging visa issues, and some people even got bridging visa E. That is a very, that's the worth bridging visa you can actually get because you probably have breached some sort of law or breached some sort of visa condition. For example, uh, staying unlawfully, then you get bridging visa E. Bridging visa E will actually attract the three year ban, the PIC 4013 and 4014, which is very, very bad. So anyway, in this video, I would like to clarify how bridging visa works. And whilst you're holding a bridging visa, can you still lodge another bridging visa and what you need to look out for? Anyway, should you have more questions and query, more than welcome to leave comment right down below. And I see you next video. Goodbye.